we're in this position, not because of transparency, truth, or uh, choice, but due to the absence of these things. Because people went to the Capitol to protest the lack of election transparency and certain states' refusal to audit contested mail-in ballots with questionable legitimacy due to no signature verification or validation even of the date that they were cast slash mailed, right? And when voters expressed concern about this unregulated free-for-all of mail-in ballots that have been pushed by all of these exploiters of the pandemic, they were called murderers, right? Oh, you want people to go and vote in person? You're a murderer. You want to deny the free-for-all of mail-in ballots? You're a murderer. I am on air. Every, I've been on air every single day for three hours a day, five days a week, almost every single day, for 10 years. I've been talking about this with voter integrity for almost the entire time. Now, they were when, when voters were asking to pause various certification processes, in certain states, so mail-in ballots could be verified and not just recounted, they were told that they were stealing an election. Every single avenue people went down, they were rebuffed. Like we were during the Tea Party days. And when people feel deprived of the only tool they have to engage their government, you see things like this happen. Now, here's the thing. Sadly, the states with the contested results, most of these states were Republican. Republican states that had Republican legislatures, that had Republican governors and Republican secretaries of state, and the people overseeing the elections were Republicans in most of these ballot battles, and most of these Republicans did not put up either a strong fight at all or a strong enough fight, B, against the incessant, ongoing onslaught litigation from Democrats, which was all designed to implement unaccountable and unprecedented levels of mail-in ballots, mail-in voting. I also said, too, that what, what to, to say this without endorsing it, what Congress saw yesterday was what cities across America have put up with from the left for months. What they put up, I mean, and even, actually, I'll say even more than that. Yeah, I've been doing this a while. I started very young in this. So don't mistake me for one of these like baby Gen X elderly millennial people. I'm not a millennial. God, heaven forbid. For one of these people who just got into the, I mean, I've been in the streets longer than a lot of people out there. I mean, literally, I've organized stuff and I've done guerrilla tactics. I've done all of it. I've done everything. I come at this from a perspective that is not like what you're going to find elsewhere. I was in Wisconsin when people were destroying the Capitol. I saw Kenneth Gladney get beaten in a parking lot with my own eyes. I broke the story on my very first appearance on Fox with Greta Van Susteren. Up until that point, I had only been on with Larry King on CNN because he was more welcoming. To, he was welcoming to conservatives, and so that's just how it started. I saw that happen. I don't need a lecture on leftist violence. I've lived it to a degree that most people are unfamiliar with. Tell me the last time you walked into an auditorium and you had people trying to jump a stage to beat you down and you had to be dragged away by security while people scream, burn you. So I, don't, I, I won't take any lectures from anybody about leftist violence. But what happened in Congress yesterday, people have been living with this from the left for months. Hell, if you wore a red hat, you got a beat down. 